Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Your Lake Fort Guy. Got another episode of the Guides Network. It is fall bass fishing season. That means they're chasing bait. That means you gotta cover a lot of water fast and you gotta cover a variety of types of cover. Probably my favorite bait in the fall is gonna be a swim jig for that very reason. It's so versatile, covers any type of vegetation, stumps, it doesn't matter. You can throw a swim jig anywhere, skip it under docks. It's just a great bait in the fall to be very efficient, cover all that ground that you need to cover to find those groups of fish chasing shad in the fall. So today, let's give you all the details about how to fish a swim jig in the fall. So a lot of today's video is actually gonna be a replay from a swim jig video that I've done in the past. Uh, we went super in depth. I felt like the video came out really well. Hayden from Six Sense Fishing helped me film it. I was really happy with how it turned out. So I wanna use a lot of that information today because there was a lot of good stuff with Hayden helping me that came out in that video. But before we get into that, I'm gonna show you guys the exact swim jig setup that I'm using right now. Now, just this week alone, on three different bodies of water, this bait has kind of been the breadwinner on Lake Fork, Lake Welsh, and today here at Lake Palestine. I uh, haven't been to Lake Palestine. I went once last winter. Other than that, it's literally been years since I've been on Lake Palestine. Cody doesn't fish out here either. So we came out here clueless, and the swim jig really helped us on a tough post frontal day get some pretty good quality fish in the boat. But this setup here lately has been the one for me. Like we said, they're chasing shad, guys. As you can see, this bait right here looks a lot like a shad. So this is one of the swim jigs we've been using. This right here is just a shad pattern swim bait. My favorite shad pattern, the one I throw the most is gonna be table rock shad. I'm not sure exactly what the name of this color is called, but it's a white with some black flake in it. But we're using the shad pattern swim jigs and we're also using shad pattern trailers. This is the Divine Swim Bait in Pro Shad. Uh, really the 3.8 to me is the ideal size for a swim jig trailer. I didn't have Pro Shad 3.8 in the boat today, so I simply trimmed down about a half inch off of the 4.4 inch Pro Shad color in the Divine Swim Bait. But that swim bait paired with that swim jig, they're made by the same company, both from Six Sense Fishing. They go together, they fit together so well, and the action of that swim bait behind that swim jig is second to none. Uh, like I said, it's been the best bait for me all week long on three different bodies of water. And the good news is, you can go order these from SixSenseFishing.com, which is linked in the description, and you'll get a 10% discount on all orders. If you punch in the code, your Lake Fort Guide, your Lake Fort Guide, your Lake Fort Guide, all lowercase, all one word, on the checkout screen in the promo box. All right, today's setup, what we've been using here lately, this is a new reel. This is the Team Lose Light Speed Spool. Can't say enough about this reel. Obviously in the name, it's very, very light. It has these great core candles. I really like these core candles. Out of the different handle varieties that Lose offers, those are probably my favorite. But this reel right here, absolutely cast smooth as it can be, cast it a mile. I also use this on my frog rods. It's held up very well, so it's a very, durable durable reel i've been using all year and this is a great reel for just about anything you want to do it's got a pretty deep spool it can hold a lot of line you can do a lot of things with that light speed spool rod wise this rod right here i can't say enough about this rod right here for small swim baits swim jigs things like that there is none better that i've ever fished this is a 7.5 heavy with a moderate fast action tip and this is a six cents lux rod the lux series it's their roughly $150 line, so not too expensive of a rod to get, I mean, literally, guys, for small swim baits, small swim jigs, the best rod I've ever fished. I've said that since the day it came out over two years ago. All right, so there you go, guys. That is the setup. That's the jig. Y'all go over to Six Sense Fishing, order it up. Like I said, punch in that code, your Lake Fort Guide. Get that 10% discount. Now check out all the dirty, grimy, in-depth details of how to fish a swim jig throughout the fall period to catch more bass. For the 7.5 heavy with the moderate action tip, I'm gonna throw a 20 pound or even 17 pound fluorocarbon, and I'm gonna use a medium gear ratio reel. This situation, when you've got all this flooded cover, I like to step up my setup and do it a little bit differently. In this situation, I like to go to the 7.3 heavy Lux Series rod, and I like to put 50 pound braid on it and step my gear ratio up to a seven to one type reel speed. The reason I'm stepping up the ratio is I gotta keep that bait higher in the water column coming through some of that flooded thick cover. 
But with this setup right here, it's going to allow you to get in and out of grass, whether it's hydrilla, flooded mats, anything that you can think of, even if it's little buck brush bushes on the on the shoreline. I know you guys out at Rayburn got some flooding going on too, and y'all got a lot of buck brush. Boys, I'm telling you, when they ain't out there on that edge of that grass with that trap, you can get that swim jig and get up in there in that buck brush and go to cleaning them out now. But you want to make sure you have that braid, because especially when you get one of these better than average size fish on that East Texas is so known for, these big five, six, seven pound fish, you need that braid to get them out of all that junk that you're fishing this bait in. And Six Sense has got your back there too, because they have, in my opinion, the best swim jig on the market in their regular standard swim jig. But they also have a Divine Braid swim jig that is designed for throwing in heavy cover on heavy line. It's got an extra beefy hook, so you can really horse those big fish in and out of that thick cover. So you heard me say that I think this is the best swim jig on the market, so now you wanna know why. Well, here's a few reasons, guys. One is the design of this head. Anytime you're fishing any kind of jig, the head design is a very important factor. And if you look at the bottom of the head on the six cent swim jig, it's got a real flat bottom to it. It helps that bait keel and stay stable as it comes through the water column. A lot of swim jigs will kind of wander and walk and wobble on you. This one stays smooth, steady eddy, coming through all that cover, which is exactly what I want. Another one that's one of the biggest factors to me is gonna be the screw lock. They have a screw lock design on the shank of their hook to hold your trailer. Now this is a big deal, and let me tell you why. When you're fishing a swim jig and you're throwing it in heavy cover, your trailer, be it a swim bait trailer or a flapping crawl trailer, whatever it is, your, your trailer is gonna grab different pieces of cover. Uh, the fish a lot of times will hit this bait and not get it. Uh, they'll pull on the trailer. But if you look on a normal jig trailer, man, you can just, there's no way, I'm pulling hard right now, guys. That trailer would be jerking off there. But on this bait right here, once I've got that thing screwed onto that screw lock, I've gone a month at a time without changing my trailer because that screw lock holds it so well. And that lets me be a lot more efficient, lets me cover that water that much faster, which I need to in this situation, and it also saves me a little bit of money on plastic. Let's talk about my favorite colors. I'm going to try and keep it simple for you guys. There is, I own a lot of different colors of six cent swim jigs, and kind of every little variance of color has its place. There's three standards for me that I must have in my boat in plentiful quantity at all times. And number one for me is gonna be a shad pattern bait. You know, a lot of our lakes up here where I live, shad is the main source of forage. Uh, when I'm throwing a shad pattern type bait, I like what they call table rock shad. It's a white base bait, shad pattern. It's got a little bit of chartreuse mixed in, just a light, a little bit amount, just a light amount. It's got a little bit of a purple or lavender type color mixed in, just a light amount of that as well. So it's basically a white bait with some purple and chartreuse highlights and I've caught a million gazillion fish on it, and I just have a lot of confidence. That's my favorite shad pattern bait. Now, the secondary forage source in East Texas is without a doubt gonna be brim or bluegill, whatever you wanna call them. Now, these little sunfish, they're gonna be some combination of green and brown throughout the year. And to me, one of the best colors that you can have is gonna be grass mutant because it has green, it has brown, and it has a little bit of a blue sheen type highlight which those brim tend to have as well. Last but certainly not least, is gonna be old black and blue. You know, this is a situation right now. The lake we're on today, the water's not too terribly dirty, so we didn't use black and blue. But a lot of these lakes, when that water gets dirty, there's just not a much better bait that you can possibly throw than a black and blue swim jig in all that flooded cover. All right, let me show you guys a couple tips on how I rig these baits. You know, when I first pull a swim jig out of the box, I'm a skirt trimmer. There's nothing wrong with leaving it full. I know some guys that do that. I like my jig baits to be nice and compact, so I like to trim my skirts, trim my trailers down. We'll show you what we're talking about. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this skirt down to about a half inch below the bend of the hook. All right, once I've got my skirt trimmed, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check my weed guard. Now, Sixth Sense is really good about their weed guards come at what is, in my opinion, kind of the perfect length. I always want to get the weed guard even with the barb. Now, this one is maybe an eighth of an inch or less, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, just a little bit longer than what I like. So I'll go ahead and trim just a tiny bit off of here. And then, as you can see, now it's just dead even with the barb. All right, now it's time to get our trailer on there. The first thing I want to do is I want to measure it up. So I'm going to hang my bait down and I want my hook to come out just a little bit in front of my, my flapping arms on a, on a flapping type trailer. So I'm gonna actually hold the bait up and kind of line it up to where I want this hook point to come out of the bait. And I'm gonna see how much of that bait I need to pinch off. And I'm gonna reach over here and just twist it off right there and it's ready to go. All right, so we'll go ahead and thread it on here and I'll show you guys just how easy it is 
to screw this bait onto this screw lock. So we'll thread this up just a little bit. Now I've marked my place where I want my hook to come out, get that on there, and then get it up to the screw lock, kind of bunch it up a little bit, and then just start twisting. As you can see, that bait just kind of follows it around, and we're home. Now I've got my trailer rigged up dead straight, just below the hook bin, ready to go. You know guys, to kind of help y'all out on where to start throwing a swim jig, here's the deal. We're in the situation that we're currently in, when things are flooded, you need to kind of get into a pocket, maybe in the back half of it, and just start covering water. And that's what makes this bait so effective, is you can be so efficient in all this heavy cover and cover a bunch of water. Uh, sometimes when the water's rising, there can be a little bit of no rhyme or reason to where the fish will be, and that's what makes it so important to cover all that ground. Now, in a normal, typical situation, what I like to do when I'm fishing shallow cover with a swim jig is I like to look for depth changes that come in close to flats. So if I have a creek channel swing or a point that sticks out next to a flat, like let's say I'm looking at a three foot flat, well if I've got that old creek channel swinging it up against the edge of it, that's the ideal situation. You just need to look for subtle depth changes that are next to expansive flats where you can cover some water with that swim jig. There's two basic kinds of trailers that I'm going to use when I'm throwing a swim jig. The first one, the one that I try to use most often, is going to be the swim bait trailer. Now, there's totally different retrieves with each one, so I'm going to walk you through those right now. All right, so with the swim bait trailer, I'm going to want to make sure that I'm making long casts. You know, swim baits, those fish tend to follow them a lot. Swim jig trailer with a swim bait on it is no different. They'll follow it, bump it a lot sometimes before they commit to it. So I'm going to make a good long cast. All right, now I'm just going to point my right kind of at it or just slightly up and what that's going to do is when I hit cover if I hit grass or any kind of cover it's going to give me leverage to rip the bait okay so right now if I'm coming along and hit some hydraulic I can just go like that and I've got leverage now if my rod is up here I have no power if my rod's down here I have no power but if I'm holding it right here I can rip that bait and it shoots out of that grass that's a big deal because a lot of your bites come when you contact that grass and it rips out but here's the other top secret trick about this deal when you have the right setup, guys, when you get that 7.3 heavy and that 50-pound braid to fish that heavy grass, you can just kind of point at it. And when it hits that grass, you just give it a little, and it shoots it out of there because you got the stout enough rod, you got the right line, it rips it out of that grass, and you can be real efficient. It's all about efficiency. Now, the second style trailer is going to be something that has flappers on the back of it. This is a little custom homemade trailer that, that I have a buddy of mine make for me, but it's just any type of flap and crawl that you want to use. But there's a difference in how I'll use the bait and how I'll work it. Now with this one, I don't need to necessarily make longer casts. This is more target oriented, getting up in that flooded stuff, pitching it in there, fishing around the target, bringing it back. So what I'll do is make a shorter pitch. And I'll hold my rod up a little bit and kind of work that bait and kind of steer it. And hold my rod up allows me to slow that bait down a little bit. It allows me to go a little slower because again, remember, I'm target oriented now. Uh, with those flapping style crawls, that's when I like to get in that real thick stuff. I want it to cause as much water disturbance as it can, and so that's why I'm using that trailer, and that's why I slow it down as much as I can, because I'm trying to bring them into it, draw as much of attention as I can in that dirty, flooded water. One other little trick you can do, you guys have probably seen a lot of pros do this on tour when they're fishing a swim jig. Well, here's the deal. They're slowing it down, but keeping it up. Let's say that you got a, a lot of grass that's just below the surface or any type of flooded cover and you want to keep that bait right around it, but you need to keep that bait from sinking down. Well, if you go real slow with that swim jig, it's going to sink. One thing that you can do is you can start shaking it. If you shake it with them flappers on there, that'll keep them things swimming and they'll keep kicking, but the bait's barely moving. Like you see, I'm not even turning my reel handle. Like that's how slow the bait's moving, but the whole time those legs are just doing this, kicking, the skirt's flaring, you got a lot of action. So when you need to slow down around targets, Pitch that thing on out there, hold it up, go to shaking a little bit, slow down, catching big ones. You know, one other tactic that's going to be really handy when you're fishing a lot of shallow flooded cover is going to be to skip the bait in up under bushes at different angles, get it way back in the junk. Here's a couple tips for you guys on skipping. One thing that you got to understand, the way the bait hangs off the end of your rod is very important. Basically, the, the more slack you have out off the end of your rod, when you roll cast it, the higher that bait's going to go. The shorter your slack is, the lower that bait's going to fire out. And the whole key to skipping is to get that bait traveling as close and parallel to the water surface for as long as possible. So what you want to do is pull just a little bit of slack on the end of your line, not much at all, and give it a good roll cast and that bait will skip right in there. All right, guys, that's it for today. We really appreciate you watching. We sure hope these tips help you. The current situation in East Texas, there's not much better bait that you can go to than this right here. Check that link out in the description and go get yourself some six cents swim jig. When you get to sixcentsfishing.com, be sure you punch in the code yourlakeforkguide. Get a 10% discount on all orders. We'll see you next time.